Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for a new video. So today I'm gonna explain you a little bit about the arrangement, mixing and mastering and all the automation, all of this kind of stuff that I've used in my Hypnotic Techno Ableton template, the one I've created during my live stream. If you haven't watched the first part where I explain all the sound design, the composition, all of this stuff like that, I will put the link in the description. You can go watch it before this one. But yeah, first let's have a listen how the template sounds and then after let's jump into it. Right, so basically the idea was when I creating the track I wanted to have this kind of lead which is going to be the hypnotic one which is going to be the one which is almost along the track and here it was this bass so that I knew that will be my lead my uh, main element and then after I will build something around the track so I usually do like this I usually start with idea and then after I build in session mode uh, the idea how can the part be chained together and and then after once I have all that I just press record and play each scene and record them here and then after I do like all the fine arrangement stuff automation and yeah so basically yeah the, the main cross idea was like using this as main element and making things moving around so that's why you've got quite a lot of ambience moving around your head you have some percussion as well moving around your head and you have as well some ads which are really uh, deep into a lot of river for this kind of a very nice uh, ambience so you see they are kind of and what I was saying about the ambience and the perk So you see the idea was really to build something complex and very evolving around this lead because obviously if you just simply listen this along the whole track even if you add variation it will get quickly boring so as you can see it's a pretty short track it's a bit under than five minutes because um kind of made a different structure than usually usually i have always the intro the break like a kind of chorus one and then i will have a break and i will have either a verse or a kind of a bridge and then after I will have another break, the chorus part two, and then after the break and the outro. Here it's a bit different. I have the intro here, and where the filter of the bass is kind of always closed. But then you can see here you have this part before the, the break one, you have basically all this part, which is kind of what I call a pre-chorus, because it's basically the track already started. You know, it's it's not the, no until here, but it's here, this, this 16 bar. Because you already have a lot of drums and you already have a lot going on around you have the filter modulating so the, the the track already started then i have the break and then after i have the first drop i have another break and the second drop with some variation i will come back in detail about everything in a second i just explained the overall things and then after i have a final break and the outro so let's dig into it first you have the intro where it's just so you main bass with all of the ambience playing Like I said, all this evolving ambience. Then after eight bar, I had the cloth I had. Oh, sorry. Then I had some perk. And you can see here the bass is still down the filter. And then from here, it's like first transition. And I start to open the filter. I have this perk coming. And you can see here, oh, I have a kind of short break. And then we have what I will consider the pre chorus, which is kind of not really the chorus, but kind of it. With this cloth I had, like it's kind of acting a bit like a ride. I 
just had the open hearts here. Alright, and then goes the first break. So the idea uh, when you do your break as well, it's good to have in mind obviously what is going to happen on the drop. And as you can see here, I dro my drop here in this case is just the kick, the bass line and the ambience a little bit like at the beginning. So basically I will have to get rid of all of these elements. So the way I've done first, I obviously a low cut. I'll let you listen. Alright, so here what's happening. I keep the drum and everything almost until the end. Almost just two bar before to drop. I've got all of my drums still playing and it's really to have this uh, kind of building tension with all of the elements until the last minute and then just right before you cut everything, you wait a little bit and then you drop your sound. That was the idea. So basically I build the tension with uh, this uh, clap roll basically. That's help. Second thing help obviously opening the filter of your, of your bass. Telling the listener or oh, something is coming. Other thing that help it's obviously you have here this riser knob which is kind of washout effect, which is a lot of delay reverb which is going up and up. So the more you events in the breakdown, the more you have this reverb delay effect. And what I've done as well here is on the on the second part you have. Basically, the set mix down, which is sending all of its sync now to uh, this return, which is this return is basically kind of the riser effect as well. As you see, it's delay and reverb, a lot of delay and reverb, and it's kind of creating this big washout effect. So, yeah, let him play until almost the last moment. Stopping, little pause. Here I bring down the filter, so you it's kind of telling the listener, okay, it's coming now. And because of we use this drum, this drum FX return, it's like all of the this washout SFX. It's still kind of uh, a little bit present after when you drop the sound, and it's kind of helping the transition. That's why I use uh, the sub mix down and with this. Uh, send here and the reason why I have set mix down mix down and master you can ask him why I have that many things uh, I'm just gonna come back at the end of the video about why I have done that when I explain all the arrangement but yeah there is a reason obviously and then we jump into the the drop which is just to kick and the baseline modulating this close I had. You can hear the pad is coming as well. So I have this. You see this EQ here with, with this filter which is kind of opening. I add the clap as well to add a bit more variation in terms of percussion. The idea being to have something different than what we already before uh, the break, obviously, uh, like in the kind of pre chorus. <laughs> then we bring the open hearts to add more drive, more energy. Right. And then it's where usually uh, we go for a verse or kind of changing a little bit the mood of the track to don't make it too repetitive. But at this time I decided to take another direction and I wanted to bring even more drive and more excitement. And the way to do that I still have, could have been able to add the ride. One thing I haven't done is dropping the, the sound with the bass with the filter open. You see here when I'm dropping the filter is low and here it's high and I wanted to drop the sound with this so I say okay let's make a break 
let's build some tension and then drop with the filter like this super open and add as well a bit of ride because the ride so far you didn't hear it neither so i say okay it's a great moment to make a break build tension and drop all of this together so that's what i've done and you can see i kind of split the break in two parts so it's eight bar but you can see it's like the four first bar you still have all of the drum element and here's what i've done four first bar drum i get rid of everything for the next last four bar and you can see you have a filter automation which is gonna bring the filter down which is kind of be careful something is coming and then after reopening it quickly before to drop so it sounds like this snare roll everything stop peace we bring the filter down we think it's gonna be peace and then It seems like this, like that's the emotion you give to your break. It's like we bring all of this tension, you say, oh my god, something is happening. Then you stop everything. It's like, what's going on? You bring down the filter, like something quiet is coming. And then at the end of the last moment, you bring everything back up. And it's like, oh, actually, no, it's not a peace moment. It's we are going back, you know? Again, with the help. With the help of the riser knob. If you don't know what the riser knob do, it's like this. This kind of effect. And this is the send I said. I send as a return like this. I still have the tail of all of the SFX when I drop the sound. Because the thing is with this effect on the master, once the knob is, once the knob is down, the effect is completely cut off. Like all the reverb, all the delay doesn't continue after. It's kind of stopped as far as I put zero. So that's why I like to use this mix down with a return. Like this, I still have a bit of tail of the effect. So yeah, all of the drum are still there. I bring the clap roll to bring the tension. And then when it's all finished, I cut everything. It's just the filter open. And then I bring it down and bring it up. And we have... <laughs> So as you can see for this track, I didn't want it like a super complex SFX transition. I wanted something raw, you know, to don't have too much to have to deal with SFX. Yeah, that's what I wanted. So that's why I didn't use any white noise, any percussion or whatsoever. And yeah, drop two. So like I said before, that's what I wanted to start the drop with the filter open and with the right to really continue and keep driving this kind of climax moment to keep driving this energy. You know, it's like never ending, rainless uh, kind of vibe, if I can say so. Here you have the pad as well playing. And here is something interesting I've done with the pad and the bass because they were kind of overlapping each other. So what I've done, I've played with the stereo width of the pad and you can see it's going from stereo to mono. Stereo. Now it's super mono. And stereo. And if you have a look at the modulation of the filter frequency of the the bass sound you can see that when the filter is up the pad is mono and when the filter is down the pad is stereo this way they are kind of moving each other So you got this kind of weird movement, but it's always as well helping a little bit with your mix because they are not really overlapping. I mean, they are less overlapping each other. And yeah, it's other this kind of weird coloration, weird movement between them two, and and it worked well. So I I got it. Then I had the perk one here. So then we enter in the final break so here's the point is to start to get rid as well of the bass sound at least to have the filter a little bit more down same with the pad you know because we started need to get out 
of everything so that's what i've done here obviously i get rid of the ride as well uh, because i don't need any more i don't need this driving energy anymore uh, i still wanted to keep most of the trend because for the outro is good as well it's kind of making a smoother outro so yeah that's what just i've done for this break just bringing the filter down of the bass and the pad <laughs> Clap field, clap roll as well. And then, yeah, after is the outro. So the outro is like pretty basic. It's getting rid uh, of the element one after each other. So you can see here, I've removed the open hats and then after I remove some of the hats and slowly, slowly, like because of the filter is going down, you hear less and less, obviously. Until to cut it completely. So yeah, like I said, it's a pretty short track, it's 450. I could have made it longer, you know, there is some part. You could have made them, I could have made them a bit longer, for example, in the intro, or even the pre-chorus, I could have made it a bit longer. But yeah, the point is now, like, I do track like how I feel, and I didn't want it because after, if you make some part too longer, then after you make the listener board, and I prefer to have a five minute track that people will really listen and find interesting rather than having a seven minute track that people find boring because it's not enough variation, it's not enough movement, it's not enough things happening. So yeah, that was pretty much for the global arrangement. So you can see a bit different than what I do usually. Now let's talk about uh, the variation I've made. So I already talked about this part going stereo and mono. I already sip and talk about the filter going up, down along the track. This is really important to always make your main elements move uh, always keeping it evolving. Think of the modulation I've done a lot in what I would say in internal, which means like everything is automated by LFO, like you can see here, this patch. I explained this last week, but just to remind you, I have all of this LFO working on the oscillator one FM modulation and position, and this way you... And on the filter, so you have this morphing effect, morphing filter effect, you have this wavetable who are always moving and evolving. You can even go further, add more extra LFO, but adding a LFO is always a great way to save you the, the hassle to make like uh, automation that you could have done with LFO basically, like automatically. That's one thing that I well about automation. Other modulation we've done here is uh, with, sorry, that you can do here. We've just done it for the cloth I had too, but when you have something pretty steady like this, you can add this velocity device and kind of random the velocity this way. You don't have something static like this. You have something with kind of slightly move as well a little bit. So obviously this you can apply to any drums. Uh, feel free to do it. One thing we've done as well. So here the bass, you see you have this return where we send the, the, the bass sometimes and the, the reason is to... It's kind of creating uh, a new ambience from that track basically because you send all of this signal into this return and because of the long delay and reverb it's kind of creating a pad or drone sound obviously for a short moment of time as long as the decay and the, and the delay are set but it adds a bit of variation as well same this you can do with the perk or with the hats sometimes sending some of the hats in the delay or reverb or in the return can can be great as well i haven't done it for this track but that's things that you can do but yeah think about that don't overdo it don't do like everything sent in return everything automated like you have to choose and things which one are important because because if you do everything for every element, it will be obviously a mess. So yeah, automation are important as well. You see, so here we automate the gain of the main amp, depending on how the filter uh, is playing as well. Because it's important to don't have, like we've done with the pad, but we've done as well the same with the same the main amp. So this way, when the filter is down, the amp is up.
So this way you always have something evolving. You, it's like, okay, well, this time is you in the front, then you bring it in the background and you put the other one in the front and you go like this, kind of responding to each other and it's kind of always adding variation and avoiding to kind of have you both sound playing in the same time and taking the same frequency range and messing up everything. That's a good way. That's what I've done as well uh, with is this one, Ambience 2. So basically I had too, too many Ambience and instead of getting rid of this one, I decided to just making it play some from time to time. So I automate, uh, the, uh, I put a utility and I automate the gain. So sometimes you don't hear, but then I bring the volume, the gain up sharply. This way it's going in the, into the reverb. And, but because it's sharp, even if it's sharp, you can still hear it a little bit after because of the tail of the reverb. You can see the reverb here, the GK time are very long. And it's coming here and there, you see, it's not always the time, but it's automation, making things less boring. Again, this is kind of element, maybe you won't hear it at the first listen, but then you hear them say, oh, I didn't notice this ambience who was coming from time to time here. And yeah, that's kind of little detail. Obviously, it's most of the people won't hear them. It's up to you to make them, to make a track more interesting. I don't know how many tracks that's happened to me. Like I'm listening and I'm like, oh, I didn't notice this on the first place. And that's really nice touch to do. All right, so that's pretty much all of the automation kind of automation we've done. So let me explain you uh, why I have some mix down, mix down and master. So first why I have mix down. The thing is, I don't like to have my master FX, which um, what I mean by that is like FX, which are more like in the sound design way, like DJ FX. I like to have them on a different track than my master. I consider the master to be only for the mastering chain. That is just for me to separate each track and make things clearer. Basically, not everyone is doing that, but that's how I like to do. And I have my low cut as well. So basically, usually what I'm doing, I'm just sending all the track. You can yeah, control add I and you can just send them to a uh, mix down or sub mix down. So that's what I would normally, normally do. Here I'll create a sub mix down. So basically all of my track are going to the sub mix down and the sub mix down is going to the mix down. And the reason why I create that is because I want you to be able to have uh, all of this element sending into the return. You see, for to have this effect, like when I'm during my break and my build up, and to have the effects who continue after uh, afterward. And this I cannot do with the mix down because the riser knob, when I bring it down to zero, it's kind of stopping straight away the effect. And the thing is, I still wanted to have this return as well being affected by the overall master effect. So basically, I needed to create another sub mix down, which is going to the mix down, but I still can send the return. And this way, the return, I said to go to the mix down. This way, when I, I have basically going in the mix down, I have all of my track, like the dry signal, and all of the wets that I send in as a return is going as well in the mix down. And that's something you cannot do if you just have like one mix down or, or no mix down at all. So this way, my tail, my all of the SFX I send in the return are also affected by the master mix down effect. And then after the mix down is going straight away in the master. So it's kind of a bit complicated to understand, but I reckon, but yeah, it's the way to have this uh, long effect tail after. And yeah. So now let's talk about mixing. So as you, if you're familiar with my video, you know that I usually like to mix as I go. And the thing about electronic music, which is gonna make you mix sounds great or bad, it's mainly the element you pick up, the sample, if they are right, if they are fitting well together. Things like, for example, making sure you kick and your back slide are in key or making sure like everything is in key basically. That's really important as well because it's kind of stuff that you cannot really save at the mix. And for example, things like don't make too much reverb, don't put too much reverb on your hat to don't make them too messy. That's as well a decision that can fuck up your mix. So you have to be careful uh, how you use all of this. But obviously 
you will never wait the last moment to add reverb to your element, you know, it's not like a recorded music, usually you use reverb and delay in electronic music more as a sound design purpose rather than the mixing purpose. But you, when you use as the sound design purpose, you always have to keep in mind your mix as well, how it's sounding in your overall mix. Because if you put a lot of delay reverb in all of your track and you just don't care if it's sounding clean or not, when you're gonna bring the mix and you're gonna have to mix, it's gonna be a very huge mess rather than every time, let's say, if you add each element and you make sure that uh, every time you add a new element it's fitting like perfectly the your track you will have less problem to the mix to the final mix like for example when you add scent if you add a scent if you wanna if you already have a scent and you want to add a new scent make sure it doesn't the scent doesn't uh, take the same frequency spectrum than the previous one because if you take both scents with the same frequency range what is gonna happen they're gonna mask each other so you have to be clever and say okay i have a scent which is around one kilohertz so maybe i'm gonna add a scent which is more about three or five kilohertz and this way they will fit well together they will no overlap because if you have all of your scent all of your element hitting at the same place you can be the best mixing engineer you won't save the problem you will have to make choice remove some stuff even if you ban them it's it won't gonna work so that's why when I say I mix as a producer, I'm always careful when I add a new element that I make sure that this element keep my mix clear or as much as I can basically. And same go with the perk, same go with everything. And you can see my, my mixing process is pretty much the same all the time. It's EQ to kind of get rid of element I don't need. Then I have a bit of reverb. So obviously the reverb is for sound design purpose, but I keep in mind as well, if you want something more in the front, like you will put your drums, you keep a short GK. If you want something more like a scent, which is gonna be in the middle of your of your space, maybe something more about three, four, five, six seconds. Uh, I don't know where is the reverb here, but yeah, two, three, four, five seconds. If you want something more in the background, obviously a very long GK with a lot of dry wet, put them in the background, and this way you have like a three plan def uh, image, if I can say so. And make sure you don't have too long GK because you can really mess everything. And yes, yeah, so what I was saying, EQ reverb, you can see I use as well a lot of saturation. Usually it's most of the time is in a lot of narrow clip and a bit of drive is just to make things louder and add a bit of brightness. And But here again, it's, it's not always necessary. Here's some EQ to remove the resonant frequency that I don't like. But here again, there is no secret recipe. You have to see what work or what doesn't and what you like or don't like. Here, I like the drum bus. So here is a, uh, I use drum bus on my hat. I like because like I said, with the reverb, usually with the long GK time, it's nice because you can put them in the big room, but you have this long tail, which is kind of uh, overlapping on other elements and kind of messing out your mix. But with the drum bus, and with this trend that you use on negative value, you're kind of acting like a gate and you kind of reduce the tail of, of, of your overall sound, but without really uh, losing the feeling of a large room. I don't know if it makes sense to you, but if you, it's like if you, yeah, you was having a very long DK reverb and then you put a gate. So this way you have like just the long reverb effect, but it's just for a short amount of time. And that's why it's easy way to kind of clean up your mix. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You see what I can do when I use delay, it's mainly for rhythmic purpose. And I don't do much as mixing because as I said, make sure you use the right scent. And then after you just have a bit of a Q saturated and reverb. And it can happen like sometimes if you want to get more exotic, but it's more like a sound design purpose to have an auto pan going on the left and right, moving around your head. Uh, what I've what I've used here as well, in some case when I feel that the sound is not too weak but need to be a bit more in the front, I use this kind of hard saturation and and compression uh, device which help me to bring the things more in the front and make them more loud louder. But yeah, like I said, don't overdo it because that's a way to fuck up your mix basically. Like for example, this arm two if I was listen lis if I was lighting it during the whole track at the same level, which kind of will probably mess my the mix of my track, but bringing it just from time to time help leave space and it's still there. Here's the same way I, I didn't put the noise on the vinyl project. It's because it was kind of, 
it's nice but it's kind of making it you mix a little bit uh, less clear so yeah that's the secret for a good mix it's good element fit well together don't overlap each other and yeah and then you will have like a nice mix so last step let's talk about mastering and what i've done here just gonna deactivate everything again usually the mastering there are there are no like huge mastering it's always a bit hard to master with Ableton plugin but still does the job honestly so here is the track so i'm gonna choose a part where for example here where it's very busy First things, EQ. So I, I lose a bit of gain because I, I reduced there, but... Uh, just low pass filter to cut everything under 25 hertz, what we don't need. I've reduced here a little bit. Because I found sometimes uh, the bass to be a bit too aggressive and so i say okay let's just time it a little bit and then i boost here to a uh, two kilohertz to add a bit of clarity <laughs> mainly because it's where the open hearts here it is and it's like helping improving the open hearts and uh, the bass as well when you open the filter it's sounding nice here and then just uh, eye shares to kind of make everything <laughs> A bit brighter. I could have used a high pass filter, maybe around here, but to get rid of all of this unnecessary uh, frequency. Then I have utility, which is just to make the bass under uh, the, everything under 125 hertz in mono, and I add a bit of width as well. This is very subtle. You can hear it a little bit because it's a track where there is a ping pong delay and the ping pong delay is very on the side and so bringing a bit of width kind of even put the delay even a bit more wider. Then we have glue compression so this is like to glue everything it's, uh, it's kind of subtle as well. So slow attack. Medium release. Ratio of 4. Usually the way I do, I always bring the, the threshold to 0 and then I just to reduce like 2 or 3 dB, no, no damage. So then I, I put this soft clipping uh, on like just to add a bit of wave shaping distortion at the input signal I don't always doing it but for this time it was working well so I left it then saturator is just very gentle this is 1 dB drive 24% is just to have this extra harmonics it's This is just, I wish Ableton has a tape plugin and I will replace my tape plugin by that, but yeah. Then I have some EQ, which is this time a mid-side EQ. So my, my point was like this, I wanted to make the kick a bit more punchy and I wanted to make it my my um, signal a little bit more stereo as well. So for the mid-side, I boost around here 50 Hz and around here 2 kilo is just to, mainly it was to make my kick punchier. <laughs> And my drum overall, actually. And then for the side, just I boost around three kilo. Because it's around where as well uh, the, the the main bass end, so and some of the ambience is where this it is so it's kind of helping with the stereo i just 
bring down a little bit here as well. But yeah, always I, I minus the gain because I, it's always easier after to kind of uh, see if you don't do bullshit or not. And then I use the color limiter here again. I like to use it lately because it's it's kind of adding a nice warm and color. Add a bit of punch as well. Make things louder. Again, it's like subtle saturation. And yeah, and then the final limiter, which is kind of... This is kind of no unnecessary, but it's just making things louder one dB more. Just squashing everything. All right, and that's it for the mastering as well. I hope you like it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the project, you can grab it. Link in the description. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Bye bye.